Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Mikey and in today's video, I'm going to give you guys a quick rundown of the seven top add-ons that I use on a daily basis. So I probably use these add-ons, I'd say around 95% of the time. And I have so many other add-ons of course, but I don't really use them that much. And what I've realized over time that there are only a select few add-ons that will actually increase your productivity and increase your efficiency. Now, overall, there are great Anki add-ons out there, but I would recommend that you start off small and you work your way up because if you just download an Anki, then there are so many things that, you know, you're, you're new to, you know, how to make cards, how to add decks, how to, how to figure out the intervals with the cards and the Anki settings. It just gets very overwhelming. So I would say to start small and work your way up because at the same time, sometimes different add-ons actually work against each other and they aren't actually beneficial in the long run. Now, there's a great channel by some guy named The Onking, and he gives very detailed descriptions of how to use every single add-on. He basically, his whole channel is about Onki, and I would recommend checking that channel out. I will link it down below in the description. Now, for those of you that like organized videos, I'm gonna label all the timestamps for all the add-ons I'm gonna discuss right here. So you could feel free to skip to those timestamps if you already have Onki and you don't have some of these add-ons. Now, if you just download Onki, I would recommend watching the whole video through because I do want to give you guys a holistic approach on how to use all these add-ons together and how they actually help build off of each one. Now, before we get started, please smash that like button, smash that subscribe button because it does really help me out in getting these videos out to more and more people. And without any further ado, let's get started. So the first add-on we're going to talk about is the enhanced main window add-on. So just to show you guys what it is, it's basically this huge main window that shows you a bunch of statistics. Now I don't really use all of them because some of them are kind of useless and I don't really care about them. The ones I mainly use is due tomorrow. So here it says 27. So I know that in my Waterloo deck, I have 27 due cards tomorrow. And for my personal deck, I have five cards due tomorrow. Now another kind of thing that I use and it's kind of really interesting to see is how many cards I've repeated in this deck. So you can see in my Waterloo deck, I've repeated 36, 36,476 times. That's how many times I've done a card. It's not really referring to the deck or how many times I've done the deck. It's just saying I've seen 30 Panasonic or the Fujitsu. No, 36. 1,476 cards. And for my MCAT one, you can see I have around 94,000 cards. So this is really useful. It's kind of just interesting to see. Then I can also see how many cards I have suspended. So I suspended all of my three A term. So you can see that, you know, cause I don't really use those cards. So I kind of just suspended them, got them out of the way. Then you could also see that I have a total of 3,824 cards for my first and second semester. So you can see, I barely have any cards for my second semester. And that's because I don't really have very, I would say memorization heavy classes this semester, kind of a lot of electives. And I basically set that up so I didn't have too many Anki cards to do this semester. But then that means last semester was really, really tough. And that brings me to my second add-on, which is the review heat map add-on. Now the second add-on that I'm gonna discuss is the review heat map add-on. And that is essentially this whole thing in jig down here. And this essentially allows you, whoops, and this essentially allows you to see how many cards you completed on that day. So the darker cards for me are the ones that I haven't done a lot of cards, so like 25, 79, not, not that many. But if I go to last semester, I could see 400. I consistently have like days where I was doing 400 or 450 cards, right? And this is really useful because it shows you how many you finished and it just looks really, really appealing. And it shows you how many cards you also have due in the future. So like here I have 27 plus five, that would make 32. And if I come down here, it shows 32. So you can see that these add-ons kind of work together. You know, they, they show different stats, but they also work together in showing the right stats. Now with this review heat map add-on, you could also change the settings for it. So if I don't want it to be ice, I don't want it to be blue and I want to make it green. So I could press on lime and now you could see it's going to turn into green. You could, there's a lot of things you could kind of change with it. It's really useful. You could also make it a yearly overview. So it would show you the whole year instead of like a continuous time month. So this is like assuming like there's no months at all. And I don't really like this one because it doesn't really split it up that much. I kind of prefer the continuous timeline but you could kind of play around with this and see the ones that you like the most. Now it also shows the current streak. So I've kind of been doing Anki straight for 42 days. So you can see I took a break in Christmas break. I wasn't really doing that much. Well, I still did cards in Christmas break because I had my personal deck, but I didn't really do that much. The longest streak I've ever done was 120 days. So like four months straight. I think that was during like my MCAT days. But anyways, that brings us to our third add-on. 
And our third add-on is the symbols add-on. Now this is super useful when you're making new cards. So a lot of times when I'm making new cards, I wanna include like Greek symbols, or I wanna include arrows, or sometimes I wanna include degrees Celsius, or just degrees in general. So there's an add-on called the symbols add-on where when you press command S, it'll show up this really nice table of like basically everything organized. So I created a favorites tab of the ones I use the most, like alpha, beta, right arrow, gamma, degrees, degrees Celsius. But you also have like different mathematical calculations, you know, greater than, less than arrows, equals to, does not equal to, all these nice stuff. Now the way you're gonna be able to create your own favorites list is essentially once you have Anki open, you're gonna come up here to the tools window, press add-ons, and you're gonna to navigate to your symbols ones. You can see I have so many add-ons, but honestly, I don't really use most of these. Some of them I actually use and I don't even realize that I'm using them. And that's, it was kind of tough making this video, like I said, because I didn't really know if they were an add-on or if I already had them on Anki. So I had to do a lot of research to figure out if these were actually add-ons or not. But essentially you'll come to the symbols add-on, you'll press configuration, and you open this window where you have here is the favorites tab that I've created and you could essentially just copy the ones you want and bring them down here And like I said, this is very useful because copying and pasting from Google is so time-consuming and it's not efficient at all And I realized that it actually saved me so much time to make up cards using this symbols add-on and that brings us to our fourth add-on Now our fourth add-on is actually one I discussed in a previous video and that is the image occlusion enhanced add-on so once you have this add-on and you want to create a new card, all you're really going to do is up here, you're going to find this symbol. You're going to click on it and it'll ask you to choose a picture that you want to use. So let's say I want to use this picture. I'm going to press open. And this is really useful for when it comes to courses where you have like a diagram you need to memorize, like anatomy or any other courses that you just need to memorize like structures. So what you're going to do is create the square. You could also create a circle. You could also use these weird shapes. I kind of just use square the most of the time. And what you're going to do is create outlines for everything you want to memorize. So let's say I want to memorize each of these four boxes, right? So I'm going to create a square for each of them. Now you're going to have two different options to choose when you're making these cards. The first is a hide all guess one. And what that's going to do is essentially you're going to click on it. You can go to your cards and it'll hide all of the cards and only allow you to guess one of them. So you can see that it's hiding these three and it will only allowing me to guess this one. But if I were to go back and press hide one guess one, so that'll only hide one of them while showing all the other three. So if I press hide one guess one, and I come back here, and I go to that card, you can see that it's only hiding one, but it's showing me all the other three. And I don't really like this one, because if you see all the other steps, it usually helps you remember the first step or the second step, and on exams and assessments, you're not gonna have those second, third, fourth steps given to you. Your professor or the lecturer is gonna assume that you already know them. So it's not really useful to use the hide one guess one. It's better to use the hide all guess one. Now the next add-on is probably my all-time favorite add-on, and that is the Frozen Fields add-on. And what that basically does is, when you're adding a new card, you have, so I created where I have three fields. Let's say I wanna add my pictures and resources field, I wanna put a picture in it. And I'm gonna press this Frozen thing. And what that's gonna do is essentially anytime I'm making a card, so let's say I were to write, the first step is promo zone condensation. And if I essentially create this new card, then this picture will remain every single time I press add. So I'm gonna press add and you can see it remains. And this is really useful when you know you're creating Anki cards from a slideshow and you wanna create multiple different cards for it. I use this actually every single day. I don't think I ever make any cards without using this add-on at all. Now, sometimes I will actually freeze the question one. So let's say I'm like in the first step of apoptosis. I don't know, let's say chromosome condensation will occur. And sometimes I want to keep in the first step of apoptosis and I'll just, you know, I kind of just want to switch one word. So I'll create a card for this one, freeze it, and then I'll come back here in the second. And then I can do whatever I want. So the second step would be mitochondria is lost. Mitochondria is lost. And then I can keep doing and so on and so forth. And like I said, that's really, really useful and saving a lot of time and it's super, super efficient. Now the final add-ons we're gonna discuss is kind of for the advanced user. I was kind of debating whether I should include them in this video or not because they are a bit confusing. But at the end of the day, I did wanna include them because they are gonna be very, very useful when it comes to studying, especially on days that you have a lot of things to do maybe not really in school, let's say you know, you're going on a trip with your friends, you're going on an adventure, and you don't really have time to do Anki, this add-on will come very, very useful into moving those cards into putting them on different days. And I'm kind of combining this step into two different add-ons because they do work hand in hand with each other. The first one is the better search tool. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick explanation of what that is. So the better search tool is essentially when you go to the browser, 
you could essentially press search dialog and this will essentially give you a bunch of options that you could find any card you ever want. So let's say I want to find all the cards that are due tomorrow, right? So I'll press on card properties, prop due. So here we have prop due and the number one is essentially tomorrow. So zero is today, one is tomorrow and minus one is yesterday. So I'm going to press OK. And now once I press one, it'll show me all the cards that I have due tomorrow. So here I have 37 cards that are due tomorrow because of the image occlusion cards that I just had, which I will actually delete right now because I don't delete them. And this will show me that I have the 32 cards due tomorrow that I talked about earlier in the heat map one, as well as the enhanced main window one. 27 plus five, that would make 32. And if I come down here, it shows 32. And this shows me all the ones that I have due tomorrow. But you can't stop here because there are different things you can also do to this, where let's say I wanna find all the cards that I do tomorrow with an interval longer than 10 days. So where when I press good, it'll show me longer than 10 days. So I can do the exact same thing. So that's how we do prop. I'll do interval with 10 days or more. So now I'll do 10. So I have four cards with interval of 10 days or more. So you can get very specific with your cards and you can also find, you know, the ones that are suspended, the ones that are flagged. You could kind of find any card you want. And this is super, super useful. Now I wouldn't stop here. And this is why I kind of said, this is for the advanced user where you actually add another add-on to this, which is called the re-memorize add-on. Now, once you actually download this rememorize add-on, essentially what it's gonna do, it's gonna allow you to take cards that are due tomorrow and basically spread them out on different days of the week so that you don't have any cards due tomorrow. So how that works is, let's say I wanna take all these four cards, right? I'm gonna right click on them, you press reposition, so I forgot to include in the video that before you actually start using the rememorize add-on, you have to make sure that you go to tools, add-ons, go to rememorize, and then you're going to press configure. Make sure that all three of these are set to true. If they're not set to true, then everything that I'm going to basically explain right now won't apply to you and they won't actually end up working. And it's going to give you up this window. So let's say I make the start position zero. So zero is today, like I said one is tomorrow. So if I make the start position one, that means starting tomorrow, it'll start to spread out my cards. But clearly I don't want to do that because I don't want any cards tomorrow. So I'll do it two. So I'll make it two days from now. Now steps is essentially how many days it's going to split up those cards between. <clears throat> so if I make the step four, two days from now, the cards will begin and four days from that date, the cards will end. So within those four days, Anki will essentially randomize the cards that I have upon those four days. So I don't have to do like, I don't know, 60 cards in one day and the next day I have so many. Rather, it'll, you know, spread out those 60 cards over a certain amount of time period. And what I obviously like to do is randomize order so it doesn't do them in order you like. Now, I probably wouldn't say don't click on this one because it gets very, very confusing and I don't want to explain it because it is super, super, super confusing. I would say don't click on this unless you really, really understand what you're doing because this is essentially all you need to know. Like I said, start position two days from now and steps is how many days it spreads it out. And if I press OK, we can see that the cards are lost and they don't, they're not really given tomorrow anymore. And that's really useful because like I said, if I have cards due tomorrow that I don't want to do or have a huge event happening tomorrow and I don't have time to do all my cards, I can use this add-on and it is super, super useful. I can't tell me how many times it saves me because Anki has this whole concept that you have to do it every single day. And don't get me wrong, that is super important. You have to do your cards every single day. But sometimes life gets in the way and you can't really control it and then you still want to finish your cards I would say try to get as many done as you can, but the ones you can't get done, put them into this add-on. Now, I would also say don't use this add-on very often. I think I've used it like seriously five times in the past year. And that's very important because you can't get used to this because the more you get used to it, the less advantage you actually take of using Anki. But other than that, these are essentially the seven main add-ons that I kind of use, I'd say, on a daily basis. Like I said, the last one is very, very advanced. If you guys do have any questions on anything I discussed in this video, please feel free to comment it down below. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Smash that like button down below. It helps me out so, so, so much. I really do appreciate it. It helps get these videos out. Smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Cheers. I'll see you guys on the next one.